Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Decoding the Unknown, the podcast where we decode the unknown. This one actually is uh, our more game show format. This is some of my favourite episodes to do, and I think the first two got extraordinary views, and I was like, this is amazing! I'm making something that is probably the most fun thing I do on this channel. Not that that stuff isn't fun, but, uh, and it also gets amazing views, and then the last one didn't do very well. I was like, oh, why YouTube? Why must you betray me? Uh, the format of Deepest Internet Mysteries is the writer for the script, Kevin, in this case, and Kevin exclusively on Internet's Deepest Mysteries, so far at least, writes me a number of scenarios, is usually five, um, and I have to guess, and you also, dear audience, play along at home, you have to guess whether they are real or whether they are fake. Has Kevin pulled these out of his arse, or has he pulled them out of the depths and darkest places of the internet? Now, I don't remember my score so far. He's winning. Yeah, yeah, I know he's winning. But uh, let's just say that I'm absolutely dominating Kevin. I think it's been, on the first one, I think I got them all right. On the second one, I think I got three out of five right. And Kevin's always like, I'm going to get uh, even more. Simon, I'm, gonna, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. And I'm like, oh, come on, Kevin. I am the internet fact, boy. <laughs> and I know all. Let's just jump into it. Okay, entry number one, CIA info. And remember, oh, we'll have the results, we'll have the answers at the end, so no cheating. Let me know how you do in the comments. Let's go. The internet has always been full of things that it shouldn't be. It could be illegal, in grossly poor taste, dangerous misinformation, or malicious code designed to rob users of their identities. Granted, that last bit falls under the umbrella of illegal, but it's not what you thought when I mentioned illegal content. Now, I always think of, I guess it's not illegal, but whatever it is, the, uh, and I haven't seen it, but I just know it exists. The Run the Gauntlet, where they have like the progressively horror, more horrible videos over time that I heard exists. And I just heard someone talk about it, and I was like, it's enough that that exists. Apparently, some of it's fake. But uh, yeah, no, there's some nasty shit out there on the internet. With how big the internet is, it's impossible to police everything. Fortunately, browsers have become more adept at, at detecting malware, and users have become more savvy to sites they should avoid. By now, everyone knows that if a site ends in .info or .biz, you should just leave immediately. You should? I didn't even know that. What's wrong with .info or .biz? I mean, I can't think of any websites that I go to that end in these domain extensions, but apparently they're dodgy. I mean, if, you're, if you've got a business, and you've gone for a .biz, like B-I-Z, uh, domain. It just doesn't look very professional, does it? It'd be like, yeah, 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 no, decoding the unknown, dot biz. Loser with a capital L. Well, we're not a business. Uh, I mean, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like something more boring. Like, uh, you know, Mikey Mike's Widgets. <laughs> Dot biz. <laughs> Back in 2001, long before WikiLeaks existed, one of the first dot .info websites was created. CIA dot .info. That is not the CIA's real website, is it? Because it's going to have a gov. It's going to be like dot .gov because the CIA is government. True to its name, the site hosted nothing but classified CIA information, much of which could uh, should not have been published. Launching in late June, only days after the .info domain type was created, one of, the, one of CIA .info's first posts contained the surviving MKUltra documents. Um, first thing that's tweaking in my mind that this is incorrect, or, or this isn't real, is I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure, that's something to say I'm pretty sure. I feel like back in 2001, the only domains were country level domains. So it'd be like, you know, .co.uk, .com, which somehow is America. But, because I, I, I guess because America is where the internet comes from. <laughs> so that, that's right, right? It was made out of like, uh, what was it, like ARPANET or whatever out of US University. So I guess they got like the main one, .com which stands for something that I don't remember. But like other countries, you know, like Czech Republic has .cz for Czech CZ. And I think back in 2001, it was just countries, right? These documents were declassified about a week later and became publicly available anyway, but the move garnered the site both a lot of credibility and far too much attention. Future postings on the site contained a combination of classified and declassified information. Some of the classified information included names and pictures of undercover operatives. The government was furious, but there wasn't really much along the lines of internet laws yet. Oh, Kevin, this is fake. You don't have to have specific internet laws for the, the illegal release of classified information. If you are... This is like, um... Uh, Chelsea Manning. 
right who released uh, a bunch of documents it doesn't matter if she's doing it online or if she's going around to bob's house and being like hello <laughs> look at all these documents either way you're breaking the law kevin i'm um, three paragraph four paragraphs in i'm already calling this as fake you've got to turn me around pretty hard this was also a few months before 9 11 so the patriot act hadn't yet granted the sort of sweeping authority that would result in the owner of the website being easily tracked and taken care of with extreme prejudice <laughs> Please, please. There's this fiction. It, this is the sort of thing I'd read in a fiction book and be like, oh, come on, you could make it more realistic. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> the harsh words for this one. If this is real, I will eat some crow, won't I? But it's not real. It's not real. Starting sometime in mid-October, a countdown appeared at the top of the website. It seemed to be counting down to midnight Eastern Standard Time on Halloween. Given the content that had come from the site previously, people anxiously waited for the countdown to reach zero. As for what happened when the countdown hit zero, all we have to go on is everyone's favorite type of evidence eyewitness testimony. All of the existing accounts of that day are virtually identical, so they are almost certainly accurate. Um, again, like all of the accounts are identical these are unquestionably i don't believe they're real but accounts that would appear on the internet and generally when you see something repeated again and again it's not because there's lots of individual people um saying like i saw it it's lots of people seeing one story and copying it it's how false facts get around like you know someone writes a fact and it's like that's not true and then another fact website will pick it up and publish that and stuff and of course i've made so many videos i have fallen for this but it is how it happens we or, well, I, I say I do my best. I'm not sure other websites uh, do, do their best. <laughs> Just throw some shade there. At precisely midnight on Halloween 2001, when the countdown hit zero, CIA.info was updated again with a post called Area 51 Info Dump. Then five seconds later, the site returned a 404 error. The server had been connect taken completely offline, and it happened so quickly no one had any time to save anything from the site. Users clicked on the link to open the file directory, but for most, it was already too late. The few that had connections fast enough to open the directory were unable to download any files before the site went offline, and the file names themselves didn't provide any information. I wish I could say that no one thought this was proof of secret aliens hidden in Area 51, but of course they did. The US government obviously doesn't have aliens and alien tech hiding in the desert, but Area 51 is still very real and a very classified place that will absolutely shoot you on sight is that i mean of course they'll shoot you on sight they'll shoot you on sight at a lot of places like if you just wander if you just jump the fence of the white house and start running towards it i mean they're probably gonna shoot you like if you go into a bank and start running towards like shit, you're probably gonna i mean in america you're gonna get shot right like people are getting shot all the time by police it's not like some unique thing to area 51 standard procedure they even have signs posted telling you that they'll shoot you which are a popular photo op for tourists much to the government's annoyance there was a very popular poster when i was a boy when i was a lad and i had it up on my bedroom door as a kid which had it was like a pic it wasn't real but it was like you know area 51 um and then i can't it was like an old faded you know like it looked like a sign you'd see at a military installation it was cool Despite the site, I mean, for a 13 year old, now I'm just like, oh, cringe. Despite the site shutting down only a few months after it was created, no one was ever publicly charged in connection with the posting of classified information. So, what was the deal with all of this? To this day, no one has any idea who was behind it, what the final info dump contained, or if they planned to pull the plug on the site anyway and just did the final stunt for a laugh. Or do we? Obviously, we have no idea what was in the info dump because the truth about Area 51 would have been some major f news but did we ever discover the perpetrator and what their motivation was and did this site ever actually exist now this now the question kevin's asking me here is more precise i don't because there's parts of this that could be true like maybe a website like this did exist i do think it didn't i'm generally leaning toward i'm gonna say it didn't but i'm gonna hedge it by saying that if it did it was fake and the cia wasn't upset the cia didn't care if the cia cared oh boy would you know about it <laughs> How to be a serial killer Everyone knows that the casual criminalist is the internet's number one source for advice on how to get away with murder. Steady. That's not true. However, it might be true. Because criminals are so stupid. They're just leaving... I mean, not all criminals across the board. You know, you don't want to disparage all criminals because there are some who are brilliant. The ones you've never heard of who get away with their crimes. But like the ones we always cover, they always make some huge errors. 
Although for legal reasons, the rules of criminals are for entertainment purposes only. They're for entertainment. It's not for legal reasons. I'm not trying to give criminals advice. Are you sure about that? However, long before YouTube and podcasts, there was a different source for this information. The website was called How to Be a Serial Killer, though the exact domain is either unknown or it was never archived by the Wayback Machine. Users report having found the website through Style Project, which at least gives us a time frame of the late 90s or early 2000s for the site's existence. I don't know what Style Project is. S-T-I-L-E. The site was a one-stop shop guide for all your murdering needs. They gave advice on how to select victims, obviously using some sort of random method to avoid presenting an obvious pattern for the police. This is the most crazy, like, unusual type of serial uh, of murdering, though. People murder per people they don't like. I mean, it's the motivation behind the murder. If, it, if people like murder by numbers or whatever it is that that um, movie where they're like, we're just gonna pick a random victim, um, is like that's super rare because it's just you, motivation's a huge part of it. I think people who are like, how to be a serial killer, they're going, oh, I suppose serial killers, but they're still motivated by something. It's not just mm, sometimes it is just the random need to kill, isn't it? Well, here we are thought myself into that one one of the preferred methods of killing was strangu strangulation via heavy duty zip tie this would be quiet while also keeping your hands free to subdue the victim and protect yourself against any of their attempts to defend themselves and of course it also featured a variety of ways to dispose of the body it's unclear if the site was meant to be serious or not and without access to the original source material it's hard to make any sort of judgment call this could have all been something along the lines of the book hitman a technical manual for independent contractors the book was written by a bored florida housewife under the hilarious pseudonym rex feral why is it hilarious i don't get the joke rex feral rex feral rex really if i even if i just toss it right here he's not gonna get it huh you're not no me neither. It had started as a true crime novel, but the publisher had pressured her to change the structure to better appeal to their readers who were fans of non-fiction military and survivalist literature. <laughs> it started as a not a fiction book. Rex Farrell had never killed anyone, but she made a she just made a bunch of shit up based on her experience reading crime novels and watching movies. Realistically, the creator of How to Be a Serial Killer was likely doing the same thing. At least I hope so. Even in the early days of the internet, it seems unlikely that an actual serial killer would think it's safe to post tutorials about murder online without risking it coming back to them yeah don't make a website about your crimes we're really crossing over into casual criminalist territory here but that should be added to the list of rules for criminals uh, that would be like a serial killer mailing a floppy disk to the police thinking they could use it to trace them and clearly that's something no murderer who would avoid detection for years would do oh i can't remember the episode to give it a proper plug but there is an episode of the casual criminalist where the guy asked the police, can you trace a floppy disk back to me if I send you a floppy disk with some information on it? And the police are like, nah, definitely not, mate. No chance of us being able to do that. <laughs> so he mails them a floppy disk and they immediately work out who he is. <laughs> Big brain. God, you are dumb. Regardless of the motive of the site's webmaster, something changed. One day without explanation, the normally voluminous site was empty. It wasn't just the landing page, everything on the entire domain had been deleted. When you visited the site, all that remained was a message that stated, How to be a serial killer has been removed. If you're really interested in killing someone, why don't you start with yourself? Fucking hell. <laughs> But who would have created a site like this, and why? Well, the why is pretty obvious, because the internet is full of trolls, but more importantly, oh, why did they suddenly delete everything? Maybe we already know. Or maybe it never even existed. I know why! This is definitely- I, I'm gonna say this is real. The only thing that makes me tweak being like, I doubt this a little bit, is that we don't know the domain. Like, I feel like somewhere that domain would be known. But. Irregardless of that, I think that is a small detail. I think this is real. I think the reason why the person deleted it is because they were probably an edgy, I don't know, teenage, uh, someone at university being like, oh, you know, I've made this website. And it gets a bit popular. And then one day, he's, you know, he's having, he's having drinks with a few of his mates who are studying law. <laughs> and they're like, mate, I'm not sure that's such a brilliant idea. Because even if you're not committing any crimes, you sure are drawing an unwanted sort of attention to yourself, aren't you, mate? And is this really the best idea? And... The person goes home and would be like, well, about 40 people were visiting my website. You know, so it's not a big deal. It's probably not making him any money. And he's probably like, either way, what's the benefit versus the small but potential risk? And then he's just like, deleted, gone, erased from the internet. I've made videos where this has happened. And I'm like, 
especially there's another channel I do called Brain Blaze where it gets a bit out of hand and I'll just be like and this person this company this nation state is like whoa we <laughs> what a bunch of clowns are they insane and then it's like oh yeah oh my god better example I was making a video for um into the shadows and it was talking about some like it's just some and I was like I couldn't find much information out about it but it's not a conspiracy theory it just seems and it just seems to be some like Russian organized paramilitary organization that is essentially just murdering people and I'm obviously not going to name them because I was recording that video and then it's like and then a journalist was pushed down the stairs I'm changing the details slightly and then a journalist was drowned and then another journalist and a political person was you know all of the stuff and I'm like well fuck this <laughs> Because the benefit to the risk is so small that I'm like, I mean, either... if that video was published and someone was like, Simon, is this the best idea? I've also removed videos then because it's like, oh, okay. Or it's like, Simon, you know that person's incredibly litigious. And I was like, I don't think I've done anything that would break, you know, that I could be sued over. But I'm also like, why take the risk? <laughs> I don't think I've said anything that could get me pushed down the stairs, but why take the risk? <laughs> Uh, so, no, I believe this one is real. So far, we've got one fake, one real. Let's carry on. The 4chan killer. Alright, I'm probably going to need to be a little bit more specific here because there's a shocking number of murderers who have used 4chan to show off their victims. I feel like I've heard about this, like, very briefly in passing, and maybe it was a previous Kevin video, but... Really? The posts are from back in 2015, but the victims allegedly go back as far as 1998. On August the 21st, 2015, a user took to 4chan's slash bboard to play a game. He claimed to have killed several women for fun and gave the other Anons the, op uh, Anons the opportunity to guess their names. If they could correctly guess a victim's name, he would upload photos of her both before and after their deaths. If the board could guess all of the names, he would reveal the location of a body that he dumped back in 1999. This is just, I mean, it's 4chan. This is just some trolling, right? He also opened the thread with a couple of images he described as being a freebie on the basis that her name was unlikely to be guessed. The image he uploaded contained a high photo, high, a high school photo of Shauna Maynard, a 17-year-old girl found dead in Nevada in 1998. He also showed pictures of a female body covered in blood and bruising that was allegedly Shauna. The thread was deleted by the moderators relatively quickly after it was created, so many of the comments are lost to time. <laughs> I don't know much about 4chan, but I thought the point was they didn't have moderators and it was like, f*** it, anything goes. I don't know. After the original thread was deleted, the user posted a new thread with images of a second female victim. If this was, <laughs> I guess they thought they won't ban the guy posting dead bodies. If this was a reply to someone correctly guessing a name, the guess was part of the comments that had been lost and her name is unknown. Once again, there was a photo of the girl alive and smiling in bed, followed by several photos of her bruised, bloody, and folded into a cardboard box. Another photo was a close-up of her face, completely black from being burned. What the f***? I don't like these. I braced myself for this on casual criminals, not on decoding the unknown. <laughs> ah! 4chan was split on how they felt about this. Half the people following the thread believed it was all fake and that these were just crime scene photos that the poster had access to, while the other half called the FBI to alert them of a potential serial killer who was begging to be traced. If you are doing that, it's like you want to be caught. Things died down until the following night when the original poster, no longer bothering with the premise of a game, posed a picture, posted a picture of a man in bed covered in blood. A piece of paper was placed over the photo to cover the man's eyes, and the post was accompanied with the words, Dying, dying. Several minutes later, another picture of the man was posted, this time with the word dead. Ah! Whoever was posting these had the actual photographs. They had included a piece of paper in the first photo that said, Slash B Slash, August the 21st, 2005. In the second photo, the idiot corrected the date to read 15, and the following day, he used the same timestamp paper but changed it to the current day. The photos were also very glossy, leading people to believe that they were not from a cheap home printer. If he had developed the film himself, as he claimed, he had at least some idea of what he was doing. Um, I feel like these photos could be from like previous crime scene things that he somehow got access to. Because I, I think pe you're developing those photos, I don't think... D people having dark rooms and shit is unusual. 
Possibly the most notable thing about these photos, other than how highly disturbing they were, is that they did not exist online anywhere else. Obviously, the first thing people did when they were presented with these was to reverse image search, but after extensive investigating, nothing could be discovered. Is that, was that stuff as good as it was? Like, that Google reverse image search, when did that come in? I know there was tin eye and stuff before that, but... 2000... I guess, but it feels like, I don't know, maybe it was around. But was the person really a serial killer, or was it some extremely f***ed up prank? Despite many people's beliefs that they were crime scene photos, there's compelling evidence that this was not the case. Crime scene photos often have markers with such put in place by the police, none of which were present. While they will initially photograph the scene exactly as they found it before placing markers, there were multiple pictures of these victims in different positions. Included in the images of the man on August the 22nd were not only photos of him, but of another body reported to be Shauna Maynard. Unlike previous photos, in this one her shirt was pulled up to reveal her bra. It seems unlikely that the police would do this, especially as there were no tattoos or other identifying marks on her stomach. That doesn't preclude the possibility that these had been photos that were taken from police evidence having originally been found in a killer's home, but it makes it doubtful they were actual police crime scene photos. The fate of the original poster remains unknown, despite being reported several times to both the FBI and Nevada State Police. Likewise, the origin of the graphic photos has never been discovered, and of course, Shauna Maynard's murder remains an open cold case. So was this a real serial killer or some sick hoax? And if the story was real, did we ever get any answers? Um, wait, Kevin, I've got to guess whether it's real or fake, and now you're asking me to make a call on whether it's like... So you're kind of telling me that it definitely is real. Um, you're not asking me whether this is true or not. You're asking me whether it's a real serial killer or some sick hoax. And I don't... That's not what the game is, Kevin. You're changing the rules of the game, Kevin. I think this is real. I think this happens. I don't need to tell you whether it's a real serial killer or some sick hoax. Personally... Or is that, or is Kevin just posing these questions not really to me, but just as a general thing to end the answer? Because I think this is real. Uh, I don't know whether it's a real serial killer or some sick hoax. I don't think people know today. I think it's probably a hoax. Um, but I am going to say that it's real. Like, Kevin didn't make this up. So we have fake, real, real. The search for the fifth crystal ball. I remember geocaching. It was like the hottest craze of 20 years ago. Shockingly, it's still going strong with over 3 million caches hidden around the world and allegedly 7 million active geocaches. It went, even went through a bit of a resurgence during COVID as it was a solitary outdoor activity that people could engage in. <laughs> you opened the box. What's in this box? COVID! <laughs> For anyone unfamiliar, geocaching was basically a worldwide scavenger hunt, except the GPS coordinates of the caches were available online on the official geocaching website. People would find the hidden cache, take an item from inside, replace it with something else, ideally of equal or greater value, and then make a note in the logbook that was included with the cache. Usually, the stuff you'd get would be something like a plastic dinosaur or a glow-in-the-dark rubber bat useful. If you were really lucky, you might even find a fresh dollar bill, but then you're like, oh no, I'm not lucky because i got to replace it with something of equal or greater value, so that's another dollar bill or something, but like, what else do you have, like a five dollar bill? The website that hosted the coordinates also had a forum where people could talk about their adventures and share pictures of the cool swag that they had found. In early 2003, the user by the name of Dance Fusion posted a picture of an object she'd found in a geocache someplace in upstate New York, but definitely not Utica. Okay. The item was an amber-colored glass ball with two red stars inside. It basically looked like a slightly oversized marble, but it was co uh, still cooler than the average finds people posted pictures of. This was well before like buttons existed online, so to show approval, people would actually have to open the thread and leave a little reply like cool or nice find to give the post validation for their efforts, but because of this antiquated system, it put one of the first replies to the pictures in front of a lot of eyes. The message was from a user named Shenron, who posted congratulations on finding the two-star ball. I've hidden seven of these crystal balls around the world. To whoever can come into possession of all seven, I will grant one wish. Um, or are you some sort of genie? Genies aren't real. I believe that so far, I believe this is a true story, but I mean, how's he gonna grant that wish? It'd be like, well, I wish you know this person was brought back from the dead, or I wish I had a billion dollars. This kind of stuff is like, it's well, how are you gonna grant that wish, Shenron? <laughs> you were wizard, Shenron. You're not a wizard, wizards aren't real, Shenron. 
Shenron later clarified that the wish could obviously be not anything, could not be anything magical in nature, okay? It had to be something that could feasibly be granted using a large but not infinite sum of money, and they could not wish for the money itself. These sorts of treasure hunts have been done many times, but usually they're accompanied by some extremely cryptic book that the hunters must try to decipher. This is likely the first time such a hunt included actual GPS coordinates to the treasure. There are only two catches. The first was that it was never specified which cache the remaining glass balls were hidden inside, and even better Back then, there were at least hundreds of thousands of geocaches, possibly over a million. Wow! They've got to work search, and it wasn't long before a few more of them were found. A few days later, the one star ball was discovered in Brazil, with the seven star ball being discovered in Rome the same day. Immediately, there were fears that there was going to allegedly be one on each continent, and the whole thing was a troll. But another was found in North America, thus allaying those fears. Within nine days, six of the seven balls had been found, with only the five star ball remaining. This brought us to the other catch. All six were owned by different people, and bitter negotiations were taking place on how to either consolidate ownership or work out some sort of wish that they could all benefit from equally. The front runner seemed to be for them to wish for all of their debts to be erased, though one of the finders was dragging his feet on the idea as his only debt was financing on a car that was nearly paid off anyway. Ultimately, it would never matter, as the official story was the fifth crystal ball was never found. The two most commonly accepted solutions were either that the entire thing was a hoax and that there never was a fifth ball, or that the fifth ball was found by a casual geocacher that didn't read the forums and was thus completely unaware of the value of the otherwise innocuous oversized marble. We'll never know whether Shenron's offer was genuine or whether it was all a massive joke by him and some internet friends that he mailed glass balls to so they could hide them around the world, or maybe we know exactly what the fate of the missing ball was, assuming any of this even happened in the first place. I think this is real. I think this is a nice, fun story, and it is real. So, what do we have? We have uh, fake, real, real, real. Uh oh, that's a lot of reels. Okay, here we go. Alien Puma Spice Train, aka the Box of Crazy. What the fuck is Alien Puma Spice Train? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so absurd, it can't be made up. I've read the title and like, it feels real, Alien Puma Spice. <laughs> One man's trash is another man's treasure, and in this case, it was the foundation of an internet mystery. A Reddit user by the name of Tram Stop Dan was minding his own business one day when he saw a large wooden box next to some trash bins in his home in Florida. The box was essentially a really old wooden briefcase. Mm, okay. Immediately reading this first paragraph, I'm like, I don't know. It feels less real already. Dan opened the box and then immediately came home to post the contents onto r slash what's in this thing. Inside the box was a massive pile of handwritten pages, technical drawings, and drawings of a more artistic nature. Dan referred to it as the box of crazy in his original post, given the contents. At first, it seemed normal enough. The dates on the work range from 1930s until the 1970s, but they were more than a bit varied. The oldest page in the box was some sort of technical drawing, seemingly intended either as a patent application or a blueprint. The creator was clearly a skilled artist, and probably a skilled mechanical engineer, but I can't make heads or tails of the technical drawings, so it could all be nonsense. Starting around 1946, the pages began getting weird. There was talk of aliens and UFOs, and the author even drew some sort of alien space train that's locomotive was shaped like a puma. <laughs> What? Oh, which led to the box getting its own subreddit <laughs> named r slash alien puma space train. From there, the works were predominantly about aliens, UFOs, and the author's encounters with both of them. The pages were all large, roughly 20 inches by 30 inches, and many of them featured drawings of strange four headed aliens that were intended to be part of some giant diorama. They were even on instructions on how to complete the diorama, though it's unclear or why the creator. Nate completed this himself. Among the documents and drawings done by the creator were a few bits of identifying information. One was an envelope with pre-printed labels addressed to Daniel Christiansen, which seemed to match signatures or initials on the drawings, thus identifying the original owner. Now there was a piece of paper from a veterans association indicating that Daniel likely fought in one or both of the world wars. These are really specific details. This one's tricky. It feels like partly made up, but also partly real. <laughs> is it possible that Daniel bore witness to extraterrestrials at Area 51 and his technical drawings were actually those of alien technology? <laughs> Absolutely not. But this clearly wasn't just a hoax by some Redditor either. The skill required to create these drawings and the massive amount of handwritten pages seemed like too much for a prank, especially with everything appearing to be suitably old. However, those handwritten pages do give us a little imp Im input into what might have happened. I feel like this is its definitely a crazy dude's box. And I kind of feel like it's too weird to be made up. 
and i mean there's also that element of it like is it aliens no it's not aliens but it's kind of like it's just a crazy dude i feel this is crazy enough to be real it just feels too absurd to be made up. The prevailing theory is that for reasons unknown, but possibly related to either recreational use of hallucinogenics or something that happened while in his military service, Daniel went more than a little bit insane. <laughs> He's got an alien space train. The pages make frequent references to Ezekiel, which is not so coincidentally the book of the Bible that contains beasts with four different faces that are often interpreted as being aliens. It's thought that whatever happens caused him to not only believe the book of Ezekiel literally, but to believe he had personal encounters with these creatures. Unfortunately, without any information available, we'll never know the true purpose or extent of Daniel's work unless we already do, or unless none of this even happens um i'm gonna say it's real it's too absurd to be fake it's too abs it's just like i mean i don't kevin you're a su you're a super creative dude but you'd have to be like smoking crack to come up with this one too digestive it's not crack if you have opted to play the abridged outbridge oh wait f i totally forgot kevin makes me intro videos oh kevin i forgot about your intro video oh i'll be back you see my heart is broken so i haven't watched it which probably like would explain why there was no introduction let's just watch it now and um well hopefully it'll make sense sorry kevin <laughs> i know you make lots of effort with these intro videos i totally forgot they exist greeting simon i am once again back in the basement where this all began i'm not going to be bringing out the scoreboard this time because i'm getting pretty sick of you guessing these mysteries so easily but i have decided to stack the odds in my favor again there won't be another guest writer, but you will once again be faced with three possible choices. For each of the five unsolved mysteries, you must guess whether it is fake, whether it is real, or whether it is a real mystery but no longer unsolved. I know that probably seems like a pretty shitty and unfair twist, but I need to get some points on the board somehow. But so help me god if you manage to get five out of five again. Okay, that makes much more sense because there were a couple in here where Kevin was asking me questions and I thought Kevin was changing the game, but no, I'm just an idiot. I did watch the uh, intro video. So let's just whip through these. And so we've got to guess whether it's fake, whether it's real. And if we guess it's real, whether it is still unsolved. So CIA.info, we thought it was fake. How to be a serial killer. I'm going to write these down. <laughs> So number one, we thought it was fake, so we don't have to come up with an answer. Number two, which was how to be a serial killer, we thought it was real. Is the mystery still unsolved? I'm going to say still unsolved. No, I'm going to say it's solved. You know why? Because I think some dude probably came forward and was like, yeah, no, 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 it's unsolved. Because why would he admit to this? It's unsolved. No one would be like, yeah, no, no, I made that website because it's just that attention that you don't want. The reason he deleted it is because he just was like, I'm out. <laughs> Risk versus reward is not worth it here. The 4chan killer. Um, I think that one was... Did we say that one was real? So is this a real serial killer? So I think it's a real story. I think it is solved because I think it's probably a hoax. Uh, let's go for four. Search of the real crystal ball. Fifth crystal ball. Um, so I think that's real. And I think it's unsolved. The one with the, the guy doing the wishes. Because I think the person that just did it as a prank. And then never came forward. Because then people would think he's a dick. Um, kind of is if it's a prank. And then the alien spu puma space train. We think it's real because it's just too crazy. And then what was the question? Unfortunately without any other information available. We never know the true extent um and i think that one is solved i think they probably found out who this dude was and he's he's just a uh, he's just like he lost his mind so first one oh my god are they really for real that makes me doubt it though although it does also mean that kevin's more, kevin's more likely to stack it with real ones because i'm more likely to get those wrong because i've got the second guessing element which is another chance for me to fall down so let's watch the outro we'll just first one false and then two through five are real unsolved solved unsolved solved let's go oh uh at home make your selections now and let's watch the outro video there's a short version and a long version oh, let's watch the long outro vision video because wow that is long okay <laughs> gotta wait for that to download 
Cue the elevator music. Video downloaded, let's go. Four minutes, Kevin, okay, here we go. Welcome back, Simon. Let's see how you did. Hopefully you did poorly for once. CIA.info is a real website dating back to the early 2000s. It has gone through several iterations, but none of them have anything to do with the United States Central Intelligence Agency. For any viewers looking for a new job in an exotic location, be sure to check out CIA.info's current website for careers in Arabia. Uh, okay, so I got that one wrong, Kevin. You got a point. It's real. Really? How to Be a Serial Killer is a 2008 comedy movie. It was also a very real website with detailed instructions on how to get away with murder that later changed its content to tell people to kill themselves. While it was almost certainly trolling, or at least meant as fiction, who created the website and why the sudden change of content is unknown. Given that this mystery has been all but forgotten, it is unlikely we'll ever have an answer. But it was probably stupid teens. Like so many who came both before and after, the story of the 4chan killer's posts is absolutely true. Though whether the contents of those posts is true is a different story entirely. The Nevada police claimed that the thread provided no new information regarding the death of Shannon Maynard, and the FBI remained completely silent on the issue, despite the fact that they were known to arrest many a 4chan user. Based on this, I'm inclined to believe that the post was some sort of hoax, though who created these posts and where the original photos came from remains unknown. I'm sure you had no difficulty guessing whether the story of the crystal balls was real or not, but the fans love this anime gimmick, so I'm gonna have to stick with it until I eventually fool you. Shenron is the name of the magical wish-granting dragon that appears when you collect all seven ah! Dragon Balls from the Dragon Ball franchise. How would I know this? The story of the alien Puma space train real, but it gets way weirder. We know this because this mystery is solved. In the 90s, a 19-year-old woman was offered incredibly cheap rent, with one small caveat. She would have to clean out the belongings of the former owner, who had passed away. That owner was Daniel Christensen. There's some weird on audio on your left track, Kevin. <laughs> like, just it sounds like you're brushing your microphone on the left-hand side. I don't know if we can remove that, hopefully. It can't be done, and we're so, so close to the only thing that's going to save us. When she went to clean it out, everything was packed from floor to ceiling with drawings, schematics, and writing like what appeared in this story. She was freaked the fuck out by all of it. So she wound up enlisting the help of two of her male friends to help get rid of everything. They were tasked with carting everything away to a dumpster, except they didn't. They thought it was all way too cool, so they wound up holding on to it and distributing some of it amongst their friends. Years later, the woman went to visit a friend and saw one of Daniel's paintings hanging on the wall. At first she thought that the drawing was haunted and freaked out, but then her friends explained what had happened. <laughs> She was older now and married, and wasn't afraid of his work anymore, other than the potentially haunted part. <laughs> and she decided that she wanted some of it back. This included the box that would later appear on Reddit. There is more to the story, and there is likely more of Daniel's work scattered around Florida. But the short version is that it is real and it is solved. Okay. Um... Let me tally up my score. So the first one I just got straight up wrong. Um, that was real. Uh, <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> the second one was real, unsolved. Uh, so what was that? That was, oh God, here we go. The how to be a serial killer. Cool. We got both of those right. Third, sh third one, um, I said it was real. It was real. The how to be the 4chan killer. And I said it was solved, but it wasn't solved. So do I get half a point, Kevin? You can decide. Uh, the fourth one was real and uns- No, I guess I don't get any points, do I? It's just I get a cross for that one. Okay. So, and then the fourth one was real and unsolved. I just got that wrong because uh, I, I, I'm just not familiar with anime. <laughs> that was a nice one. I thought that was definitely real. Uh, and then the fifth one was real. I got that one right. And I also said it was solved. So I got like two out of five which I feel is not bad, considering the extra challenge.
So, well, thank you very much, Kevin. This was fun, even though I lost. <laughs> How do you do at home? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching or listening to this episode of Decoding the Unknown. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like, subscribe. If you're listening as a podcast, leave us a review. That would be grand. And I'll see you next time.